Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Oops. Okay, so um, we're looking at um, spiritual aspects of worship ministry, some of the foundational things and also some things that we need to consistently grow in, right? Um, and these are some things that we need to um, inculcate or you know make it um, a focus and also uh, make it a point to uh, show that the worship, everyone in the worship team also understands this um, and knows the importance of this value of this, right? So that it's not just, okay, your idea, but uh, they should really understand, okay, this is this is what we need to thrive and function in the worship ministry. This is what we need so that the worship ministry has longevity, right? So that you can, as a <clears throat> worship minister, you can, uh, you can really fulfill God's call Right, so these are these are some things which are important. Right, we need to understand that. Okay, now um, one of the things that we um, need to understand as worship ministers is that our dependence on God, okay, our leaning in uh, into this, you know, into the heart of God, spirit of God, into what He wants for that particular. We're talking about corporate worship for that particular moment, for that particular service. Um, uh, understanding that aspect of it. Okay, so while we uh, we cannot assume that everybody understands it, that right? we cannot assume that okay, just because there is a worship leader and he or she leads worship, just because there is a team and they've been leading worship for some time, we cannot assume that they understand it. So this is something that we need to. You know, reiterate, maybe teach and uh, instruct, right? So, the thing is to listen, to flow, flow meaning you know, learning to follow as the spirit of God leads, right? So, flowing with the spirit of God. So, the spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Well, He has um, certain places that we need to go. And he wants us to. He wants us to move. He wants to move the church into, um, you know, it's, it's a strange thing, right? One is that we intentionally come and offer ourselves, our heart, what we desire to God, right? So that's that's something that uh, uh, that is one part of it in the sense, right? I, I come, I willingly offer, I willingly surrender, right? But the second part of it also is that the Holy Spirit enables us right, to do this right the spirit of god anoints us empowers us to do this right? so uh, so we lean on him we are dependent on him to do this right so because the word of god talks about that we worship him by the spirit right which scriptures that um i'm just trying to Sorry, I was trying to find the difference. Does anyone um, know that that we worship God by the Spirit, or He? Um, of course, John chapter uh, four we know, but apart from that, um, oops, um, um, One of the epistles that we worship him by the Spirit, when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, how he leads us. Um, okay, anyway, so um, let's um, let's move on. You know, we'll just when I remember, I just uh, share that reference. So, so the thing is that we worship the Lord, and it is by the Spirit of God. The Lord Jesus said. That we worship Him in spirit and truth, out of our own human spirit, and also as led by the Spirit of God. So all that holds good. 
but we also worship him by the spirit right so we see there's a direct connection in worship and being empowered being led by the spirit of god right where god wants us the spirit of god we know um, the spirit of god leads us right the lord jesus said he will lead us into truth right he will lead us into all truth so that's one of the ministry of the holy spirit that he will lead us he will lead us into the presence of the father he will lead us into all truth so we are depending leaning on the spirit of god in order to be led into the presence of the father right and uh, to worship him by the spirit right so while the human aspect of me um yeah somebody has a question um yeah nina go ahead please um sorry pastor that was by accident sorry oh, okay okay fine yeah philippines 33 yeah? yeah just one second let me just check um philippines 3 and verse 3 is it um what does it say it says uh, for we are yeah who worship god in the spirit um rejoice in christ jesus i think there is also one verse which talks about by the spirit yeah but this also would refer to that who worship god in the spirit right now uh, is and this is obviously he's he's talking about the holy spirit right um yeah and he's contrasting between physical worship right uh, about circumcision and all that so yeah so um so the thing is that while we we decide but we also dis- decide to lean on the holy spirit to lead us in worship you know, it's a thing so while we also you know we decide okay i want to worship right um where we see worship is a choice right psalm 34 was one right i will so there the psalm says i will so you're choosing i will bless the lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth so you are deciding you are choosing but at the same time it's not just your choice but you are also leaning into the holy spirit uh, leaning on god to empower and also to lead others minister others minister to others right so here are some things that we can um focus on Okay, when it comes to lead, being led by the Spirit, okay, one thing is to look at the selection of the songs that we are singing. Okay, what we are doing, maybe the scripture portion, uh, uh, what we are going to, you know, exhort the people with uh, as we begin, maybe somewhere in the middle, if you want to exhort. Um, but look at the songs. Like, look at the songs as a journey. Okay, uh, look at the song list, the set list as a journey. um and you remember you know all of us know that tabernacle and the journey from the outer courts uh, right where, where there is a sacrifice of you know and then you move from there to the holy place then from there into the most holy place right the holy of holy so we see that there is a progression there is a journey right so sim- similarly also when you're making uh when you're you know preparing these songs and putting together these songs um now there is no thumb rule you know there is no hard and fast rule um that you need to start with a fast song or you need to start with you know like there's nothing like that but the thing is that you think of people you think of heart preparation okay people come typically if you're thinking of a church congregation not everybody is as prepared to worship as the worship team okay worship team has practiced during the week worship team would have come on that sunday morning and spent time again doing a sound check practicing praying so the worship team is prepared you maybe if you are in the worship team or you are a worship leader you've thought about it so many times during the week okay uh, these are some songs i want to you know you prayed you lifted these songs you are prepared but the congregation need not be okay congregation uh, need not always be prepared you know they're coming with different things right for example they want to reach the church on time 
okay family of four husband wife children getting the children ready sunday morning and come on get up eat your breakfast you know the children are just you know get, have a bath finish and all that struggle get into the thing you know catch a, whatever they coming and uh, and they coming late so the father is shouting the mother is shouting you know it was your mistake you should have woken them up you know uh, earlier you know you why didn't what why didn't you get them ready why were you reading the paper you know all those things are happening and with that they enter into the <laughs> yeah enter into the courts of god you know with so thanksgiving is not there you know it's more like complain and they're thinking oh god why did i you know come late everybody is watching uh, and it's like maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes you know already into worship so people are coming with different kind of experiences you know i remember once just going to church as going early and i saw this car which is parked by this wayside and i think maybe i've shared you know by the same they see this young parent you know father mother and this small one and small one obviously is not you know feel like vomiting and so by the side they you know then, then this one is vomiting by the road side and you know they are getting a bottle of water you know washing and then they looked as if they were going to church like they are dressed up and all that and this little one so you know people are coming into the gathering with all kinds of experience all kinds of mental frames of mind so we need to be aware of that right so immediately jumping into you know a deep song of intimacy will not work they're not ready nobody's ready like, lord i give you my heart no 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 chances <laughs> they are like no i don't want to you know so we just need to be you know sensitive to that so that is the human aspect of you know making that journey so you you sing some you know non threatening out of court songs like you know god is good all the time yeah i can sing that you know maybe you, you know something like that will help and that is the you know normally that would help but if you feel hey, congregation is prepared sometimes you know there all there's a hunger that you sense in the room hey, you know there's a hunger there spiritual hunger everybody's like wow this is ready to go and there is a culture of worship in that particular church maybe and everybody's just ready to dive in ready to encounter god go for it right but be aware of be sensitive to what's happening in the room next time so selection of songs is like that right uh, we are leading people to an encounter with god right so um as you prepare as you you know select those songs be mindful of that is it a journey that i'm making you know, from the outer court to the holy place to the most holy place right um so one thing that i keep in mind is songs about god traveling into songs to god like songs about are like maybe can a song of in- invitation it can be about him right how good my god is how great is our god etc come now is the time to worship songs about him moving into songs to him where you're directly conversing directly talking to god that's a good uh, thumb rule to have guideline it's not something set in stone in the sense you don't have to do that all the time but it helps right it helps to prepare the hearts of people it have songs about god moving on to songs to god right so um so that that helps um then it's good to have a theme okay it's a good to ask the lord lord what is it that you want me to focus on today you know what is it that you want to really you know um uh, emphasize and and for that it's good to also check you know what is the message on okay, what are we going to be ministering in the word uh, what are we going to looking at uh, what are we going to be you know uh, what is a preacher what is the pastor going to be Uh, preaching on it's good to even think of that and pray along that so it helps right now all songs need not be okay let's say somebody is going to be talking about the you know let's say um we just finish end times right so not all songs have to be on that but it helps to have maybe one or two songs uh, about expectation you know about the lord's return maybe it helps right so think through that um 
So it, it's good to have a theme. Okay, what is it? And it prayerfully consider that. Lord is the Lord putting in your heart, right? Then it will also help if the previous song or the song that you're going to you know, uh, sing next builds on the previous song. So what do we mean by that, right? So let's say the previous song, song was about drawing near to God. Okay, the previous song that we just sang, finished, is about drawing near to God. Then the next song, it will be good to build on that. Meaning, it, maybe it's, it's, okay, I've drawn near to God. Now what else? You know, answer that question. I've drawn near to God. You know, can I offer my heart? Can I offer my life? Can I, you know, what is it? Can I go deeper? You know, can I just uh, worship the, uh, or ask, uh, sing to the Lord about the hunger that I have in my heart, right? Or just to gaze upon the glory of God, the beauty of His holiness, and all those things. So let it build on the previous song. Okay, so that will also help. Now, now you know, I just want to share all all this not as a mechanical formula. Okay. Not as a mechanical formula where you say, okay, I need to have first song, second song, third song. No. Uh, let it be something that comes out of uh, this conversation with God. Right? Let it be something that comes out of uh, engaging with the Holy Spirit and may, let the Holy Spirit guide. Let God speak. Let, let Him lead. Okay, say, tell the Lord, Lord, this is what I, I just sense. I want to offer to you. I want to bring before you, God. What do you think? Right. And may the Lord lead. Right? Um, it helps when the song builds on the previous song so that it takes us deeper. Right? Using words like deeper, higher, further. Right? So higher meaning you know, going further, going the distance. So all talking about this journey we are making you know, towards the heart of God. Right, so um, it helps to build the previous song. Okay, then um, understanding the different phases or different sections that happen normally during a time of worship, praise and worship. Right, so there could be a time of declarative praise you know, when we proclaim, declare about who God is. There could be a time of praising God for who He is, praising God for what he has done, what he has promised. There could be a time of intense adoration about the beauty of God, about the holiness of God. There's a time of worship, right? So where you're saying, Lord, I, I, I bring myself to you and, and etc. There could be a time of personal communion with God, right? Where personally for you, you know, you're in your own words, in your own language, you're communing fellowshipping, like talking to the Lord. We can actually give some space for that. And also some of those Selah moments. What, what is Selah? You know, we see that phrase. Yeah, it's a purposeful pause. right? Where we take a pause from all that activity to focus on God, to reflect on His goodness. Right? So we stop, step back, and pause. So it's good to have that. You know, not say, okay, after the third song, we're going to do that. Not like that. right? But again, we see that it's a very organic, very spirit-led kind of a decision where you say, okay, I've sung that song and you know, this is a time, this is a Selah moment. Right? Repentance, celebration, expectation, all this are different and different sections of the praise and worship. Now, the time, let's say if you have, if you're going to have a you know one hour. It may not have everything in it, right? All this may not be, you know, it, it won't be like, okay, 15 minutes of this, 15 minutes of this. It's not that. Sometimes the entire time of, worship, uh, of you know, praise and worship is just maybe declarative. Entire time is just very declarative, celebratory, right? The entire time. Or it could even be an entire time of just not felt wholehearted worship. It could be that, right? But we can understand. It is good for us to know that all these aspects are there in worship, right? Okay. 
so so this is before the worship time where we are preparing where we are praying we are preparing it helps to pray extended time in you know in the spirit in tongues and uh, prepare yourself spiritually we are you know getting sharpened in the spirit to hear from god and there is also also an impartation of revelation and you know instruction from god in our spirit a deposit of his word a deposit of even you know sometimes god just um reminds us of songs right songs just come to our hearts and um and then we realize okay this is something god wants me to sing god wants me to do so uh, it helps right so this is while preparing for the uh, worship time okay so here are some things to keep in mind during the worship time now what all all that we are seeing you know it's good for us to train the it's good for us to train the team as well right not just for us personally but for all those who are involved you know just to talk about this at some maybe an opportune time right uh, just talk to talk about it just for people to be aware of it hey, these are the possibilities right uh, and this is how you prepare sometimes people can be clueless okay how do i prepare you know getting all stressed up um and how do i prepare what do i do what songs do i sing i have no clue no idea well this is what you do you take some time step back ask god right and make it a journey right uh, what's in your heart what is god putting in your heart all that right okay so during the worship time okay this is these are some things again some practical instructions that uh, we instruct the team with okay first thing is don't it interrupt the flow of worship okay so so the, what what is the objective we are leading people to have communion with god right it's not to have communion with us right and that happens you know in the sense initially you exhort you encourage and saying oh how many of you are happy you know that's the usual question no happy to be here today uh, uh how many of you are glad okay fine initially you have that but then as we leave we want people to commune with god we want talk we want them to talk to them we want them to talk to god we want them in their heart to have this deep communion with god so let's say i you know i'm having a conversation with let's say nikhil you know i'm having this conversation i'm talking to nikhil and, and then francis keeps interrupting you know it says uh, pastor i think you should talk to nikhil you know talk to him about this you know i'm already talking but then he says you know have you have you met nikhil <laughs> suddenly you know i'm having i've been talking to him for about 15 minutes and suddenly francis says you know have you met nikhil you know this is nikhil this is pastor pastor this is nikhil you know he's doing this interruption and introduction um so that is actually interrupting the flow of communion you know whereas we need to facilitate you know say okay you know, why don't you just go ahead and do this why don't you do this you know um go ahead and talk to god go ahead and you know express your you know love for god go ahead and be aggressive in your faith for god just declare the promises of god so we can facilitate that but once that is happening that is already happening and you sense that people are doing it we should not interrupt right so unnecessary speaking unnecessary talking in between is really you know not necessary right so um see while we Uh, you know there there is a difference between how we lead people who who are let's say who already you know are worshipers right and people whom we know who are just you know who are just beginning their journey and we are enabling them uh, to lead in worship there's a difference you know we need to instruct especially when you when you're leading children uh, you've led children with children with children you need to talk you need to tell them you know do this because the children are distracted they are looking here there you know sometimes they are singing sometimes they forget they are just doing other things so you need to tell them hey come 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 you need to do this you know have you thought about this and why don't you do this so we need to instruct so with age group with you know people uh, who are mature immature whatever um we need to be understand uh, we need to understand that as well right so um so don't talk unnecessarily um ab- you know unless it's absolutely necessary you know we don't have to interrupt the flow right um second thing uh, another instruction is practical thing is to be 
sensitive to what God is putting in your heart, what God is speaking, right? So, which means be sensitive to the prophetic, right? So maybe there is a scripture that God is putting in our hearts. Maybe there is a song that God is putting in our hearts. Maybe there is a uh, you know song to be sung. Now, when we when we consider prophetic worship, we see that it's great. this could be a song to God, where people are saying, "Okay, God, this is what you are. This is who you are." It's a prophetic song to God, or it could be a song that you generally sing to the people. You know, two situations. Um, uh, to the mountains in our life, to the storms in our life, right? challenges. So it's a prophetic declaration. You know, mountain, you will move in Jesus' name, or you know, I will live and not die and declare the, the glory of God. So it could be a declaration. So, so that when it comes to the prophetic, normally we think that it's it has to be on the spur of the moment. It has to be spontaneous, right? Now the prophetic song need not be always spontaneous. What is spontaneous? <clears throat> Unplanned. You did not plan. You did not plan to say those words. You did not plan to sing those words, sing that tune. But at the moment, it just dropped in your spirit and you sing it out. Right? Those words dropped in your heart and you sing it out. It was not planned. So prophetic can be spontaneous, but prophetic can also happen as you're preparing. You know, as you're preparing to minister, Lord puts certain things in your heart, and that is also prophetic, right? So you know, when Nathan went and confronted David, it didn't happen at the spur of the moment, but he had. You know, God had already spoken to him, but he went with that. So the prophetic word need not be at the time spontaneous. Well, it could be. But also it can be when you're preparing, when you're praying, the Lord says, okay, you do this. You know, um, <clears throat> like I was once, I was struggling, you know, what song to start? Well, this was particularly, this was a, like an evangelistic Sunday service. And I was thinking, God, what song to start with? None of the songs seemed, uh, you know, right to start with. Right. So that, so I just went to bed. Okay, uh, I think it was Saturday night. Yeah, and we were saying, okay, very confused. I don't know what to, what start with. But then Sunday morning, and I woke up. I woke up singing a particular bridge of a song, right? The bridge section of a song. I just woke up with that song in my heart, and, and immediately I knew, okay, this is what this is what we are going to start with, right? So it didn't happen during the service, but it happened before. It was not a new song. It was an old song, a song that we had already known. But it was prophetic in nature because it was birthed by the Spirit. So it can even be <coughs> sorry, an old, known song. It need not always be a fresh, new song. Okay, So, um, so be open for the prophetic. Right? Okay. Um, so during the worship time, another aspect to think of is, uh, you know, this whole thing of repetition, you no, know, we I think we looked at it last time, last class. Um, repeat the songs. You know, don't rush through songs. Repeat songs. Uh, don't not for the sake of repetition, but <clears throat> if you feel that God is doing something, right? Maybe in that chorus section, in that. That we need to. Even it needs to be done. There's nothing that needs to be repeated, right? <clears throat> Sung over again. In that case, do that, right? But also, don't rush from one song to another. You know, this is the thing, right? Okay, we're done. Song one. Okay, next song two. Next song three. No, no. Let the truth of what we're declaring. Let you know, because a song is like a window that opens to a different view of God. So spend some time. At the window, looking at that view, enjoying the view, right, and and then move on to what we do, need to do next, right. So soak in, be saturated in, um, and also you know look at look at the room, look at the congregation to see you know is everybody locked in, are they distracted, 
like we can we can sense that right people are either focusing concentrating engaging or they are very distracted they are looking here and there and you know they're not really engaging in it and and so on so when it comes to repetition when it comes to this you know just be mindful of that okay maybe people are you know not able to engage maybe it's a time for an exhortation an encouragement of the people to you know engage in or maybe it's time hey we've done this and people are tired we need to move on to a fresh song so that they can again engage with it right so yeah um i think we looked at this right recognizing sala moments recognizing times of personal worship um recognizing moments of high praise and declaration and you know sometimes even prophetic action right uh maybe a shout um to bring down the wall <clears throat> and recognize the song of the lord meaning it's a spontaneous prophetic song at that moment and recognize that right like so, sometimes what happens is okay just say okay now we just need to sing that particular thing you know there's a pressure to sing spontaneously there's some pressure you know because spontaneous singing means okay something spiritual is happening so there's a pressure to sing spontaneous songs we don't have to be right because is it a genuine song you know is it something genuinely birthed in our spirit by the holy spirit well go for it but don't be under pressure to manufacture you know, i put together okay you know a song of the lord right don't be under pressure okay uh, so these are some things for us to keep in mind um right so <clears throat> it's good to give space for and when you say personal worship it's good to give that space it could be a time of personal praise right where we can say okay why don't you just open our mouths and just praise the lord sing your praise to god and uh, all the instruments are instrumentalists are playing and we can do that or it could be a time when it's quiet and we say you know <clears throat> why don't you have this time of communion just share your heart to god pour out your heart to god and it can be a quiet moment as well so it can be a moment when of uh, praise high praise spontaneous praise or spontaneous worship now this uh, this really helps us you know helps the worshiper to worship god out of the overflow of his or her heart right not just with the words of the song but out of the flow of our overflow of our heart okay okay any questions um to be looked at uh, before and during the worship time some of these practical aspects of practical but spiritual aspects right um of worship any uh, any thoughts or any any anything any difficulties you know those who have led in worship and then you know you see that things are not happening and suddenly you had to change stop we can talk about that also yeah. okay um it's a question here of small groups of men when we don't have people who are skilled in instruments um can you please suggest if we can use some recorded music tracks to sing along and worship god or is it better to involve at least one person um who knows and who knows any instrument a guitar to have a more meaningful time in the lord so yeah so like we were saying you know it, yeah, there are there are times environments where we don't have uh, you know skilled uh, instrumentalists right so there's no musician um but since we know since we understand that worship is beyond song beyond music um yeah so all people can actually you know maybe if there's one person to just facilitate to lead the congregation saying okay let's do this or let's sing this that's enough right so people can without music well people can sing people can and and now you know since we have karaoke tracks which are available meaning the music is there the lyrics are there in the video um and maybe there is a guided voice also you know just singing that melody so we can we can actually do that uh, you can make use of all these um you know 
uh, aids in order to uh, worship the lord in song right uh, but otherwise it can even be uh, it can be just people sitting with the word and uh, just praising god worshiping god and uh, maybe you know you sing a song or two and you know uh, sing together as a group you can do that yeah right um there are plenty of tracks available uh, on youtube so that's a great uh, blessing and you can use that yeah. any any thoughts anything okay Okay, so um, okay, so here here's something to you know think about. Okay, okay, you, it's your turn to lead worship, and you you're there, and you don't feel it. You don't feel like worshiping. You don't feel like leading. What do you do? Huh? Just sing and finish. <laughs> okay. Hmm. 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 Mm. Yeah, I think you should use the mic, yeah, please. So we, yeah, sorry. So the question was, okay, if you don't feel like it, you know, you're feeling very dry spiritually, and uh, but then it's your turn to lead. Um, yeah, so. We should be looking back mm. at what God has done us, our lives. Start to, you know, encourage ourselves that it's not about my feelings, but... Mm -hmm. It's about the worthiness of God. Maybe some scriptures. Yeah. Read, pray. Mm. So the thing is, um, one one thing is to protect yourself from reaching that place, you know, because it it happens. But especially, like, let's say, um, you know, you 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 maybe you led the previous day, and you're leading again. And again, right? There's kind of a, uh, you know, you're physically tired, emotionally not there, right? And we need to protect ourselves, right? So which means that, that those are times when we need to spend some extra times in the presence of God. Go and say, God, no, I'm, I'm not, you know, maybe, you know, spend half an hour just praying in the Spirit, just putting some worship things, just rising above it, you know? And um, it's important because sometimes emotionally you're numb. You're not, you know, emotionally you're not excited, and it happens. It happens to all of us, right? And driving to the service, I'm wishing. Uh, I wish somebody would preach. I have to lead the <laughs> lead the worship and preach. And I'm thinking, God, I wish somebody was there to do it today, right? So, the, but those are times when I can't. Just go with that and be passive, but I have to rise up, right? And it's possible. You can rise up. And um, it just takes a moment to just get back and say, God, you know, uh, and, and the Lord will, you know, it's like the river that is frozen, you know, it begins to thaw and then the river begins to flow again. You know? So, so that is the thing. So, which means that, you know, you, you do what's possible from your side and you do what's possible. Don't, uh, I love that circumstance to push you down. Right? You know, don't reach that place. Um, you know, maybe you know you're just going before the mic, and then you're like, "Oh God, you know, I don't feel like it." You know, you know it well. You know, when you when you wake up in the morning itself, you feel that way, right? So, work on it. Do something about it. 
you know just just go to the you know go to god's presence and say god i i need you god i need you to speak i need you to and and one i think like what um uh prince was saying you know one thing is to look back like look back look what the lord had done see what the lord has done in your life you know and we can give thanks there's nothing like giving thanks which again you know kind of stirs us up brings us back uh, uh, to experiencing his presence giving thanks to god you know you just remember give thanks yeah uh pastor for this one like we need time right we need time but suddenly something happened and yeah it's not feeling like worship yeah so do? maybe you were feeling okay but just before you went something happened and then yeah so then the thing is to lean back on the grace of god you know, like you said you know you know the songs are true but your heart is not fully engaged in it right and it's it's okay to be it's okay to be honest before the lord and say god you know i come i i come as i am and uh, i at the same time you know so, so the thing is your heart at that moment is not distant from god so that's the thing you know when you are in a heart is distant from god when our mind is distant from god that's when passivity sets in right you're passive but then you know in that moment of maybe it's hurt maybe it's disappointment uh you know maybe it's lack of any emotion or excitement we still you know make a choice to engage with god meaning you're talking to god you're saying god no i don't feel it this way but i'm just being i'm going to be faithful that i'm committed to it i'm going to be faithful and uh, you know i remember some some of those moments when uh, right you know when we have those five days of prayer and then um you know somebody says they can't come and they come at the the last minute you're not prepared you know you are you are not in that frame of mind at all so even as you go you don't have anything you don't have anything to say you don't have anything to sing you know you're just going before the lord but you're, you're fully trusting fully committed you know your heart is right god i'm helpless right now but i'm going to believe in you i'm going to trust in you you're so you're not distancing yourself from god you're just going to drawing near to god and i i i remember some of those moments being the most enriching times of worship right uh, enriching times of being aware of the presence of god and how the grace of god just led us to some of those moments of, you know just that one hour just went by um, and and so on so the thing is to again not distance ourselves but to draw near okay so in our disappointments don't distance yourself in in a moment of dryness or fear or lack of emotion don't distance continue to engage with god continue to draw near to god right and continue to dig deep within uh, i think praying in tongues is a wonderful wonderful gift god has given us um because it talks about the fact that you will be spiritually edified that the mysteries of god will be imparted to your spirit and and so many wonderful things happen sometimes we don't know what we should pray for as we ought right romans 5 talks about that romans 8 so we we pray in the spirit and that helps us right and then just be aware uh of what god wants to do at at that moment right okay okay let's look at um okay so um so this is we are looking at a time okay, we looked at before worship or during the worship time and we're looking at a time that is after after the preaching of the word okay so the pastor has come or whoever is you know the minister has come and shared the word now now there is a you know um somebody asked a question yeah go ahead uh, uh <clears throat> yes pastor uh, go uh, i was just uh, listening to all that uh, the different yeah. things that we need to keep in mind so mm-hmm. can we say that uh, the key really would be uh, uh to be i mean the state of preparation of course not just before the worship uh i mean suppose we have to do i mean lead but really to have what was mentioned a, a kind of a lifestyle of uh, worship and i mean our times with god has to be really solid because i mean though, especially i'm talking about those situations 
mm. then suppose you, you like you said that i mean i mean it was a part of the uh, le uh, learning that if you sense the congregation just going away or this is there there is no connect mm. or anything like that ideally maybe uh, when we prepare uh, we should be i mean prepare in such a way that not only not only about the songs but the mm. entire sequence if we get it from the lord then there shouldn't be a problem but like you said in case there is that kind of a thing Mm. to be able to really depend on the holy spirit at that hour at that yeah. moment will mm. really require us to be in a state of i mean really depending a dependence on the holy spirit a life of prayer and all of that isn't it others how will it be possible to do anything meaningful at that time no at that at yeah. that moment i'm just saying it would be very difficult i would say it would yeah. just be it would just be trying to make something out of that situation and that time mm -hmm. right? it would not be uh, really a meaningful this that one and that prophetic uh, uh yeah. thing also you, your it, it can come at that moment is it I mean, that uh, that was a, yeah. that was kind of new yeah uh, uh -huh. it can be a spontaneous song um, you know it, it could come as uh, like uh, there are a lot of songs that we uh -huh. that we sing where uh, you know where um, these songs started as spontaneous songs of prophetic songs of worship um maybe a couple of lines maybe three or four lines and then uh they worked on that song and it became a full song you know but it started as a spontaneous during a very spontaneous time uh, a time of just waiting on the lord and you know it started as a spontaneous praise or a tune or a you know so it's a lot of songs they are there in in the church which which the church thing I'm, i'm talking about the global church of course which started out that way so it's uh, interesting to study the history of such songs yeah okay. yeah so um so to answer you know i mean just to i know i know you're just making an observation so the thing is yes uh, one needs to be strong in the spirit etc but there are times when you know our, your emotions let us down it. or yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there, there are times when we, uh, you know, it's like just like floating on water. You know, you just let go. You're saying, God, I'm vulnerable. Uh, I've done, I've done all I can, but I'm just totally, totally depending on you, um, and uh, to worship God with that sincerity of heart. And then, God always, you know, uh, steps in and, um, yeah, and then makes a difference personally as, as also to the congregation. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, that that's really encouraging to know that the Lord will really come in at that moment when you need right. Uh, right. So, so that was yeah. Really yeah. 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 I mean, he's always there, but then we experience the release uh, of his grace and favor. Yeah. Yes. That's that's nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So so when we look at. Um, Oh, I think we don't have much time. Okay, so next class we look at you know after the ministry time of the word, um, just like how we are preparing for the worship time. So after the ministry of the word, what else can we do? What are some practical things um, to help? You know, kind of build or edify or invite the spirit of God um, in response to the word. How can we minister? How can the worship team minister? Right. So we'll look at that next class. Okay, right. We'll uh, yeah. So that's it for now today. We'll stop here. Thank you. Yes.